Well, I have the greatest regard for the work of Dr. Royale. In fact, it was 41 years ago when I happened to walk into a health food store in Newton, Massachusetts, and in addition to having all the health foods for sale, they had a literature rack, and they had reprints, articles, medical papers, nutritional articles, written by Dr. Royal Lee and his colleagues, colleagues published by the Lee Foundation for Nutritional Research. And they were five cents or 10 cents or 15 cents, and I bought a whole bunch of them. And I cut my teeth on this. In fact, it was the work of Dr. Lee that had a great deal of getting me into nutrition and an interest in health and healing as you see today. So Dr. Lee was a tremendous positive force for health in the world. When he looks at vitamins as a process and not a substance, I think that makes perfect sense. The best word for this is coenzyme. Most vitamins operate as coenzymes. They are involved with other life processes. You don't get better by holding a bottle of vitamins in your hand. You don't get better by swallowing the tablet. You get better when the tablet breaks down or the capsule breaks down or the powder is absorbed and it goes into your body and then your body knows what to do with it. So sure, vitamins are part of a process. Having said that, we need to understand that vitamin C is ascorbic acid. That is chemically true. That is its chemical identity. There are people who say that it is not the complete vitamin. That's probably more of a philosophical discussion than a chemical one. There are factors that work well with vitamin C. The bioflavonoids come to mind. And it is certainly true that people that take pure ascorbic acid and eat a lousy diet will not be as healthy as people that take pure ascorbic acid and eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So I recommend you do both. Get your fruits and vegetables into you because they're a good source of many things, fiber, nutrients, taste, <laughs> minerals, and the cofactors that work well with vitamin C. But take pure ascorbic acid or pure vitamin C or any kind of vitamin C you want, but take additional vitamin C because most foods that we buy, especially now in March, are low in vitamin C. So you get your food factors from food, you get your pure vitamin C from a supplement. Do both. That's what I do. So vitamin C is C6H8O6. It's level ascorbic acid. There's only one way it can be made, and that is the vitamin. I realize that some people will be miffed by this, but if you don't like my peaches, please don't shake my tree. I'm never going to please people on this one. I take it from all sides, and I don't care. I fall back on Linus Pauling. I figure he probably knew what he was doing. He wrote my organic chemistry textbook, <laughs> after all. <laughs> and that seemed to me like the man understood chemistry better than just about anybody. And he's generally regarded as one of the most important minds in science for the last hundred years. So let's hear it for Dr. Pauling. But it's more than Dr. Pauling. It's also Robert Cathcart, the physician in California who treated people with high doses of C. He used ascorbic acid or a buffered form of C. And you have the work of uh, William J. McCormick and Dr. Frederick Robert Klenner. They were treating patients back in the 1940s and 50s when you didn't even have choices of vitamin C. Really, it was a, a ascorbic acid or sodium ascorbate. Dr. Lee is an important force, and I think that his writing is brilliant and absolutely essential reading, and ascorbic acid vitamin C does work. You can buy vitamin C entirely made from foods. It's very expensive, and it's a very low-potency tablet. Whenever you hear someone say this is a food source vitamin, I suggest you write to the manufacturer and get a full label disclosure. It is rare for a high potency vitamin tablet to contain only so-called food source vitamins. Because if it did, the tablet would be enormous. A food source high potency tablet would be the size of a Frisbee. You just can't 
do it unless you have the vitamin concentrates, the synthetic laboratory-made vitamins. Now, I'm not saying that that's better. I'm simply saying that's a fact of life. If you're going to pay food source prices, you better make sure you have a food source product. Write to the manufacturer and get a full label disclosure. Not some platitudes or pat on the back reassurance in the letter saying that we make them as natural as possible, da, da, da. high quality control in accordance with harmony with nature. Yes, that's a lot of baloney. You want to see a full label disclosure. If you're looking at a food source vitamin C, it's going to be 5 milligrams, maybe, possibly 30. I've never seen anything much higher than that. If you have a 500 milligram or a 1,000 milligram vitamin C tablet, I guarantee that's being fortified with the laboratory product. Not because uh, it's a bad idea, but because it's the only way you can do it and make a tablet that you can afford and that you'll swallow. If you can afford the more expensive C, as I said earlier, you go ahead and do it. But for most of us, and for most of the world that's dirt poor, cheap vitamin C is the answer. I did an analysis once comparing the vitamin C you get in an orange, if that orange costs, say, 50 cents or a dollar, which is literally what they cost right now uh, at the end of winter, sometimes more. And I figured the amount of milligrams in an orange, if you're lucky, and compared it to vitamin C from a big box discount store. And it works out that vitamin C from ascorbic acid in a tablet is 400 times cheaper than getting it from food. If you're having trouble paying the bills, take cheap C. If you have enough money to get the highest quality, you go right ahead and do that, and I wish everybody success but get those vitamins into you. They don't do any good on the vine and they don't do any, any good in the bottle. <laughs>